Uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to be talking about distributed data and powerful tooling with Prism and CockroachDB. Um, and the, the way we're going to do this is we're going to be talking about um, the individual technologies, sort of what they do, um, how they work really well uh, on their own, and then um, sort of how they pair together nicely, and then give a quick demo of that. So should be should be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and then like like, like we've said before, <laughs> we, we like to introduce ourselves a lot here. I think I, I put too many of these slides in. Uh, but yeah, I'm Saban Adams. I'm a developer advocate here at Prisma. I'm fairly new. Um, I've been on the team for just a couple of months now, and it's been a great experience working with an awesome product. Yeah. I'm still Adrian Howard. We just went through this. <laughs> cool. Uh, and then, yeah, so this is our, this is the, the cool thing here is that as we've announced before, and as Adrian alluded to a second ago, uh, we do have uh, support generally available for CockroachDB. So this is nothing new, but we just wanted to reiterate that this is out there and available. So anyone who wants to use this in production or is thinking about using it in production, uh, we're we're ready for it. So that should be uh, that should be available for you to use and test out. And then yeah, we'll just jump into um, what Prisma is. Um, so. Prisma is a uh, basically an ORM, and it's a fully type safe ORM. It has a bunch of different little pieces to it, um, but we are an ORM that is completely type safe. And so, if you could move to the next slide, actually, uh, the the first piece of Prisma is its type safe ORM, where we provide um, a lot of the functionality that um, some other ORMs provide. However, we do it in a, a fully type safe way. So every input that you provide to Prisma and any data that you get out of it, even if you're selecting columns uh, and relations, is uh, fully type safe. So you can have uh, that peace of mind that you're working with the right data, that you are um, selecting out the data that you want, and that you're providing the inputs that you need to. Uh, and then the next one. Yep, and then Prisma also provides a nice schema migration tool. And this one actually really pairs well with CockroachDB. And so we'll be talking about that a little bit later on. Um, but this allows you to perform uh, database migrations, um, update your table, update your schemas, um, and do it all within one nice tool that Prisma provides through the CLI. And then finally, one of the newer things that we have out, and it's actually uh, really recently uh, became generally available is our data platform. Uh, and this specifically helps you move uh, data to a serverless environment. So this will help you with connection pool management. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, different features where you can have an integrated Prisma schema. And so you could view your schema right within the web browser, uh, view your data, run test queries. And we're also adding a lot of new features. Um, if you didn't get a chance to check out Prisma Day this year, uh, we had a nice talk called The Future of Prisma that goes over a lot of different features that are coming to the data platform. Uh, so definitely check that out uh, if you get a chance and you'll be able to see sort of what's coming next. Awesome. Uh, thank you for that, Saban. Uh, I'm actually interested because this is a Prisma meetup group. If you are brand new to Prisma and this is your first Prisma meetup, give us a shout out in the chat. We'd love to see all the new people. And if you've been here before, uh, welcome back. Uh, so what is CockroachDB? Probably a lot of you have not uh, heard about it. We have been around for, I believe, eight years. Uh, the company has been around for seven years. Um, don't celebrate your seven year birthday or eight year birthday on Twitter. They will block you because you have to be at least 13. So uh, that was a, a fun little thing that happened to us, uh, but we are back on Twitter. You can follow us at, at CockroachDB. Um, CockroachDB is a distributed SQL relational database. So we were built from the ground up to be distributed. Uh, we can scale fast, we can survive anything and thrive anywhere. Uh, the last part, the Thrive Inter Anywhere, is really cool because we actually had a customer come up to us at a conference and talk about how uh, he went dumpster diving for computers and used those to set up uh, a CockroachDB cluster. And it had <laughs> been running for like five plus years. And during that time, they actually moved the, the cluster from one house to another without actually taking down the database. So really cool story there. Um, but 
we are not just like Postgres in the cloud. Uh, we are completely new. We do implement the uh, Postgres wire protocol. So that's the easiest way to connect to us outside of Prisma. Uh, but uh, we actually can scale horizontally like most uh, document databases uh, just by adding more nodes. And we have really great uptime. But what I want to talk about today uh, is CockroachDB serverless. So we want you to never have to worry about your database again. So you don't have to think about servers. You can just go sign up for free. A cluster is created for you super fast. Uh, pay only for what you use. And with this comes, uh, I think, hand in hand, we need to talk about elastic scale. So with CockroachDB serverless, your database can actually scale all the way down to zero. So you're absolutely not paying for it when you're not using it. So I know some services, they have elastic scale, but that doesn't scale all the way down to the zero. So you're constantly paying for something. With CockroachDB, if you have an application that say only, you know, it gets used on the weekend, then the rest of the week, you're not actually paying for anything because we're able to scale everything down. And then once you need to use the database again, we can spin it back up, similar to like a serverless function. Uh, we have a tiny, tiny little cold start, but once it's up and running, then no problems. Uh, and it is Postgres compatible, so that helps with developer familiarity. If you've ever used Postgres before, you're going to have a really easy time uh, onboarding to CockroachDB. And then I, the part that I think is uh, really nice, uh, because this is kind of how I used to pick up my databases, it's forever free. So it's got a generous and never ending monthly credit for requests and storage. So I believe that we give you five gigabytes of storage and 250 million request units a month, uh, which is enough to do a lot of side projects. And then when you're ready, uh, we scale with you. So each month, those request units are replenished and you're only responsible for paying what you go above that. So if you use 251 million request units, you're only charged for that one million request units. Quick math there. <laughs> um, if you're interested in learning about how we built CockroachDB serverless, uh, all the infrastructure to, to make a truly scalable uh, serverless database, uh, check out this uh, blog post that we wrote, how we built a forever free serverless SQL database. Uh, hopefully the, uh, the QR code works for you. If not, we will make sure to put it in the description here. What's next? I believe it's back Good time. Here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is one thing I really wanted to point out. Uh, this is one of the cool features um, of CockroachDB actually, uh, that I think pairs really well with Prisma. Um, so we talked a little bit before about the Prisma Migrate, which allows you to basically update your Prisma schema and just run a couple commands to get your uh, database updated and have a new schema available on your database. And that's really cool, but a lot of people um, have this problem with database migrations where they have some downtime. They have um, a little bit of time where your schema is updating. Maybe you have to bring your database down so that you can provide your updates and then bring it back up and allow it to take uh, data flow again. Uh, but CockroachDB actually has this really cool feature called online schema changes. Uh, because they're built in a distributed way, uh, there's different nodes with different database servers set up on it, and they all are considered one like central cluster of databases. So um, with online schema changes, you can actually provide uh, a migration and run it without the database ever going down. So you Oh, thanks. Uh, you start <laughs> off with this uh, with this Prisma migrate process where you make the update on your uh, Prisma schema. Uh, and then after you've set up all your tables, all the columns, maybe add new indexes that you want, you can run Prisma migrate. Uh, and then uh, with CockroachDB, by default, it, act it actually uses this online schema change feature. Uh, so your change gets applied to your CockroachDB database. Um, and then CockroachDB itself handles uh, rolling out those changes in a way where you don't get any downtime. So it'll bring down maybe a couple of your nodes, update those, backfilling data, um, and then slowly roll it out across the other uh, database nodes until it's finally out. So the result is that you get a really nice flow for zero downtime migrations that uh, if you were to try to set this up just sort of from scratch, this is actually a pretty complicated problem to solve. And a lot of teams work really hard to get this sort of workflow. Um, so I think it's cool that the, the two of our technologies sort of do this together. Absolutely. 
Uh, and uh, I just wanted to take a moment to talk about some of the exciting things that are coming to CockroachDB serverless. Uh, so right now I'm working on an example. It's using uh, Remix and Prisma to implement row level TTL. Uh, so this is allows you to set a time to live uh, expiration for table rows, uh, similar to what you would see in a lot of document databases. I know that MongoDB has this and um, DynamoDB. Uh, so it's something you, you typically see in, in document style databases, but we are able to do it uh, on a relational database. And so that's pretty cool. Uh, so the example that I'm working on is a shopping cart where you can add items to the shopping cart, but after a certain amount of times, they are removed from the cart. Um, but there's lots of other things that you can do with it if you are accepting sensor data uh, and it's like constantly saving rows to the database, but you only care about maybe a 30 day window, you can have those rows expire once they hit 30 days. And so you, you constantly have a rolling window. Uh, row level TTL, it's currently in preview uh, in 22.1, our 22.1 release, uh, which will hopefully be in uh, serverless uh, by the end of the week. Uh, so check that out. And then the other thing that I'm very excited about is multi-region for serverless. Uh, this is currently available in CockroachDB dedicated where you can set up your, your own dedicated clusters around the world. Uh, but we're working on adding this to serverless. So whenever you sign up for serverless, you just have access to all of these nodes all around the world. And that really speeds up building global applications because you can keep the data close to the user. Uh, you can specify uh, a region by row or by table. So there might be some tables that you want to keep global so they're available to everybody. And so you have multiple replications all over the world. Uh, and then there might be some rows and tables like user data that you want to keep in specific regions close to the user. So that way everybody has the same experience with your application. So that's very exciting. You can do it today with CockroachDB dedicated. Uh, in the future, hopefully in the next year, we're going to have this available for everybody. So that's just something else that's really exciting. Yeah, and it's cool to go through these and sort of think of uh, the, the pairing between Cockroach and DB with these cool features where uh, Cockroach sort of handles a lot of these on their own and Prisma handles its own set of problems that the developer experience within the application mm -hmm. code. Uh, so when you pair those two together, you get this really, really awesome blend of just ease of use for the developer. Um, and it, I don't know, it gets me really excited to, to see those, yeah. uh, the two different technologies sort of putting features out like that. Yeah, we have this uh, process internally where we write aspirational blog posts. And someone just wrote one about uh, global application development uh, using, I think, Dino Deploy and CockroachDB uh, serverless. And it's just, it, it, it really gets you pumped where, like, <laughs> this is the future that we are trying to create. And, and it was, like, step by step, just so easy to... The example they used was a streaming service. So there's you know, tables that you want to have available close to everybody everywhere. Uh, and so you can make those global tables. And then whenever you're talking about like the preferences and statistics that are um, specific to the user, you want those stored close to the user. And then it even goes into talking about like, what if the user actually moves? So we have a user who likes the vacation in London. Uh, but lives in California. And after a while, they vacationed in London so much that they just decided to move there. So how do we attack the problem of actually migrating their data that's region locked to a new place? How do we handle the, uh, the case where they are trying to watch their streaming media from London? How do we deal with uh, them accessing their data that's across the pond? So it was a really cool thing. And I, I love that we do this kind of thing. Unfortunately, we can't share these blog posts externally, but <laughs> it, internally, it really gets you pumped and it just allows us to like push out really cool um, features. Pretty. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. awesome. Okay. Cool. Um, um, I think the plan was for me to run the demo, but given my screen situation, maybe uh, you can uh, share your screen for it and we'll sort of be the driver. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, am, I was not prepared for this. So, um, <laughs> I don't have anything open. Do you like? Do you want to give it? Maybe if you're not presenting a uh, a slide deck, do we want to see how it will work? Do we just yeah. want to try it out? Absolutely. Uh, switching back over to yours because <laughs> I have. Um, so in CockroachDB Serverless, we give you five clusters, and I have used them all. 
Oh, <laughs> nice. So I had to delete some things first. Cool. Yeah. So let's try Hold switching back over to yours. If not, we can we can go through this. Yeah. Um. How is that? It's not good, is it? Um. Yeah, it's weird. Some weird refresh. I wonder, are they <laughs> upgrading things uh, in StreamYard right now? <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I've, it's funny because I've used it before and haven't seen this. So, I, yeah, I think probably my screen will be a non-option okay. here. So let me uh, get a new window here. Do, 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 do. Cool. And again, thank you guys for uh, for bearing with us here for some of these technical difficulties. I know. What is going on? Like, I'm worried about oh, like, my my computer has like started up the big fan. So oh, oh. Um, <laughs> let's go through and I'm going to real quickly. Oh, every day it makes me go up and I guess while he's setting some of this up, um, I, I'll just like to remind you guys, we do have a raffle going on for the CockroachDB um, definitive guide. So if you go here, uh, put your name in the raffle and uh, near the end of the stream, we'll announce who won and get some details there. Okay, there's that. Right. And I guess this will also be a cool, uh, unexpected demo of the, the the Cockroach Cloud CLI. So this is just sort of what logging yeah. in and checking out your clusters. <laughs> I'm gonna delete a cluster here. We're gonna delete Juicy Rhino. Um, that name was auto generated. I did not pick it out, but <laughs> I did find it hilarious. All right, so now I am back to four out of five clusters. Um, okay. let's that real quick. Let me. A little bigger. We're uh, part of the thing that's cool is we can do a lot of this just on the command line. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're you're new um, new to this, it's really quick. Uh, so first, let me let me grab a browser window here um, because I want to talk about Remix. Oh oh oh! There we go. I, uh, I'm playing around like I never share my screen or have a live stream or anything. This is this is fine. Uh, so Remix is a framework. We can actually just kind of run it up right here. This is my new favorite uh, application framework. It's called Remix. You can check it out at remix.run. Uh, makes it really easy to build uh, web applications, uh, taking care of the front end and the back end. Uh, and it can be deployed to a number of different places for sale, Netlify, fly.io. Uh, pretty much you name it, they have a way to deploy to it. Uh, and recently they came out with Remix Stacks, uh, which is kind of their concept of a templated application uh, that's opinionated about what it's using, what database, what authentication, uh, style system, et cetera. Uh, and what's great about these stacks is most of them have decided to use Prisma as a way to connecting to the database. And so what that means is if you don't like that they're using, let's say, SQLite and you want to use CockroachDB, it's actually really easy uh, to switch that around. And that's what we're going to be doing today. And we're just going to use the indie stack. And so most of the stacks are named after subgenres of music. <laughs> uh, so we've got the indie stack. We've got the blues stack. Uh, Netlify just came out with a K-pop stack. Uh, but we're going to use the indie stack. And here we can see uh what's in the stack so it's a fly app deployment with docker production ready sqlite database uh styling with tailwind database orm with prisma and a number of other things mm -hmm. um but as somebody who works for cockroach db i'm like well i would like to use the indie stack but i want to use it with cockroach db so what this demo is going to do is we're going to uh start up a version of the indie stack uh but we're going to switch it to use cockroach db and uh, we'll run through that. So most of this is going to be in the terminal. So let me bump this up one more time. Did I 
Like it. There we go. All right. Cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, let me just maximize that as well. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to initialize a new application uh, using the Remix and new stack. So I'm going to copy and paste here. Um, so from my developer folder here, now I got to switch all these around. Uh, I'm going to run MPX create remix, and I'm going to give it a template of the remix run in the stack. Um, so this is going to involve uh, running NPM. So again, you might have to bear with us depending on how happy and fast NPM is going to be today. <laughs> uh, so let's run this. See, now we wait. Okay. Hey, that was pretty yes. quick. <laughs> well, that was just uh, realizing that I ran NPX. Uh, yeah, right. So it's going to be fetching a whole bunch of things. Uh, and then it's going to ask us some questions. And funny story, yeah. we actually, recently we were at Remix Conf, me and Adrian were, and we got to meet in person for the first time. So that was super cool. Got to hang out a I bit. Know. He stuck it was a really, a... really good conference, and they're already planning the one for next year, and I highly mm -hmm. recommend that you go. Even if you don't know Remix yet, uh, the talks were amazing. The, the people are amazing. Mm -hmm. And just like that whole group uh, from me at Remix, it's uh, really great. Yeah, definitely. Just the, okay. just the conversations you have with people it makes it all worth it. We're going to call this my indie stack. Uh, so it's asking me where I want to create the app. Uh, I'm going to choose TypeScript. We love TypeScript. Uh, and run npm install. I am I'm getting better at it. I, I you might notice me if you are part of the Prisma uh, Slack community Slack. Like I was just in there today, and I'm like, I'm a I'm a TypeScript noob. How do I get this to work? <laughs> um, okay, and so it's uh, this is where we're actually running npm install. Mm -hmm. And so this could take some time, um, but let's. See, might have a time. There, I do see a question in the chat. It says, "What's the difference between oh, yeah. something like Planet Scale or MongoDB and this?" I apologize. I'm pretty new to databases, um, so they're all uh, databases as a service. Um, Planet Scale it uses MySQL and Vitess. Uh, MongoDB, uh, Atlas is their service, and MongoDB is a document uh, database. Uh, so not relational, um, and CockroachDB is a relational, uh, dis relational distributed SQL database. Uh, so we are more similar to Postgres, and they're they're all databases as a service. They they all can scale out. They just do it a little differently. Uh, with our serverless offering, we can actually scale down to zero and and have the uh, consumption based pricing, etc. But it, it really is going to be based on, on what your need is. So if you need a, uh, a highly consistent uh, transactional database, um, I would go with CockroachDB. <laughs> uh, and nice. Uh, uh, yesterday, I moved my SQLite database to CockroachDB. Nice. Yeah, so got a little spoilers then, huh? <laughs> That's cool. Spoilers. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. We are, we're not even going to do much with the SQLite database right now. We are mm. so close. We are so close. <laughs> it's funny I, I went through um sort of the code for this demo a couple times and always the the npm install was the longest piece and that kind of just goes to show how quickly you can get up and running nowadays with the full application um that's ready to be distributed globally that's it's pretty crazy yeah um okay it's like hanging at the end mm-hmm so I, I think uh, we are pretty much done um, with the with with the Remix app. And so I could actually run that uh, and we can see that it works. So okay. maybe we're so close. <laughs> we need to we need to set a timer up and send it over to NPM afterwards and say, look at your load times. <laughs> I know, this is... Well, also my computer's probably freaking out because they're like, you can't, <laughs> if you're using two different displays and you're streaming and everything, like I can, it's, is it getting warm? Yeah, it's probably fine. <laughs> 
There we go. Hey, there we go. Uh, and now it's running uh, the remix.init script. So this is where it's doing things like setting up your database, running Prisma Migrate, uh, doing all those things. And so the point of Stacks is whenever you're done, you are like it's ready to go. And so you can see here it's it's generating the Prisma client and then et cetera, um, seeding the database. And so we can just start development with npm run dev. So let's go ahead and do that. npm run dev. And we got errors. Oh, you got to CD into the into the directory. I so <laughs> whenever I was writing these instructions, I did the same thing. So let's <laughs> CD. Uh, is it my indie yeah. stack? Is what I'm calling it. All right, so we're in it. Ugh, there's something wrong with uh, Starship on, on on this laptop running Intel processor. I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> it should. It, it's mad because it can't tell what node version I'm using. Uh, so now we can run npm run dev. It's going to start up a little developer server. Doing things, generating CSS. Uh, and we are done. Nope. Now we are done. There we go. Okay. So if we click on this, it's going to, of course, open that in the wrong screen. But we end up with a little site. Oh, here we go. That's fine. Uh, we end up with a little site like this. And we can even log in and uh, the username is Rachel at remix.run. And then the password is Rachel is cool. So here is uh, the little app. It works. It's got authentication. You can browse the different notes. You can do a new note, new note. Hello. Save. And here's our new note. Um, so this is great, works out of the box, but it's using SQLite. So let's go through the process of uh, spinning up a cluster on CockroachDB and switching it over. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, this will not take as long, um, <laughs> but I'm going to close this out. We'll go back over here in that. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to use the, the CCloud CLI for CockroachDB serverless to create a new uh, cluster database and then get the database URL, which is what we need for Prisma. Uh, if you don't have uh, CockroachDB installed and you're using a Mac, or if you don't have the C Cloud installed and you're using a Mac, you can just run this command here, install it using Homebrew. That's how I do it. Uh, but I already have it installed. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a C Cloud and we're going to use the quick start command, which I think is really cool because it uh, it, it really lives up to its name. It's going to start you really quickly. Uh, so we're going to run that. We do want to create a new cluster. Um, the cluster name, so it gives you a name, Course Mouse. We'll just use Course Mouse. Uh, I'm going to choose AWS uh, and then US East 1. Uh, are you ready to create the cluster? Yes, I am. So we're creating the cluster. And this is actually really fast. Boom. We we now have a cluster. Yeah, um, that's crazy. <laughs> it yeah. feels like magic every time that one that part happens. <laughs> so we're gonna connect to the cluster. And so the cluster doesn't have any SQL users. Uh, so we need to create a new one. Uh, for the username, I am going to choose Victor. Uh, and and I picked that because I've just finished watching the new season of the Umbrella Academy. <laughs> um, and then we need a password. And so I'm going to use, and I wrote it down, so I, I know how to like type it in again. P, capital A, S, S, W, 0, R, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is my very secure password. Yeah. <laughs> we need to create a database. And so I'm just going to call it Indie Stack. Uh, the cert path, I just accept the default. Uh, would you like to collect connect to the cluster? Yes, I will. 
Uh, and then how would you like to connect? What we're looking for is the general connection string. This is what we're going to feed to uh, Prisma. Uh, and so we'll do that. And then it outputs this string right here. So I'm going to copy that right here. And now we want to uh, go into our .emv and paste that in, replace what it already has. So I'm going to just go ahead and fire up VS Code. And it's going to open in the wrong window. Oh, no, it didn't. Wow. Hey, there that. we go. Nice. Look at that. Something's something's <laughs> working right. Uh, let's make that bigger. And let's bump this up. And then we're going to go find our uh, moved our .m file. Uh, here we've got the database URL. We are just going to replace it with the one that we got from CockroachDB. And we are good. Yeah. So the next thing we need to do is make some changes to uh, our prisma.schema file. Uh, so we'll go in here and we'll look in here. And so right now, our database, we are targeting SQLite. Uh, because of 3.14 and above, we now have uh, the availability to change this to cockroach db. Um, we don't have to change the URL because it is targeting that environment variable. Um, environment variables, they use them. Don't, don't show your passwords. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and so we can change that. And now because the stack automatically uh, ran uh, the migration, the Prisma migrate, we need to, to remove that. So let's go back over here and we're going to remove the uh, Prisma migrations folder. So we're just going to do an RM, RF, Prisma migrations. Uh, and then we're able to create a new initial migration. So we can run npx Prisma migrate dev name init. And so what this is going to do is it's going to take the schema file that's already available uh, and push that to our CockroachDB instance. Yep. And just uh, some clarification on removing that migrations file. So when you do use Prism Migrate, it sets up sort of this migration history. Uh, so you have a view of uh, the different states your database is in and the commands that were, uh, or the the SQL commands that were run to get your database to its current point. Uh, and whenever you switch databases, uh, you're going to want to remove all of that because you're going to be basically starting from a fresh start. Uh, so that's, that's the way to do it there. Yeah. Um, OK. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and rerun the setup uh, that's provided with the stack. which I think it's just doing, uh, yeah, so it, it's going to seed the database as mm -hmm. well. So uh, pretty much the other stuff has already been done. Uh, Prisma Generate and Prisma Migrate Deploy have already been done, uh, but it's adding on the Prisma DB seed. So we have some things in there to start with. Uh, and we are, we are done. So we can go to npm run dev again. We'll let, let that start up. Yep. And so what we've done at this point is we've just stripped out SQLite. We've created the CockroachDB uh, cluster and basically drop and replaced it into our Prisma schema. Uh, that's, that's one of the really cool things about Prisma is that abstraction over these databases. So um, it really was just a matter of changing the environment variable um, to the connection string and the provider tag. Um, and with just that, you can get a completely new database running uh, under yep. Prisma. Uh, so here's the site. Looks the same. Uh, we'll hit login. We'll do Rachel at remix.run. And Rachel is cool. And we logged in. We were able to authenticate. You can see that the note that we created whenever we were in uh, SQLite is gone because this is a fresh database. Uh, and so we can say new cockroach db note. Um, hello. And it all works. Uh, cool. So we took a, a remix stack that was built for another database and we changed it. 
And if we take out all of the uh, the the NPM time, this was probably this is probably like you can do it in five ten minutes. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and so that that this all just plays into that theme that uh, Prisma and CockroachDB integrate so seamlessly together and provide uh, just this awesome developer experience where you can get up and running. Like this application is fully ready to be distributed globally. Uh, it's running on some of the you know the greatest technologies that are available right now, and it was uh, like you said, it only took a couple minutes to set up. So that's that's pretty darn cool. And just real quickly, I'll use the uh, the C Cloud to go into uh, the database so we can take a look. Uh, okay, so I need my password, which is P A. This is why I wrote it down. S S W O R D one two three four. So it's starting the the shell. <laughs> did I? Uh, okay, I did not spell it right. So I'm going to copy and paste it now. <laughs> There we go. Hmm. Oh, it's because I'm using the wrong user. There we go. There we go. We're doing it live, folks. Um, so we're getting into the shell. Uh, we're currently connected to default DB, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to use ND stack. So we'll connect to that one. We can show tables, uh, and here are all of our tables. So we've got our yeah. note table, our password table, our user password, our user table, and then our uh, table for maintaining the migrations. But done. Yeah, perfect. It's awesome. Yeah, cool. And I think I, uh, that's it for the demo. Really, we um, like I said, we demonstrated that it's uh, you know super easy to get up and running with both of these. And it was pretty quick. So thanks for thanks for running that, uh, Adrian. That was super cool. Sorry for the confusion yeah. with the um, with the screens and all of that, but it, I think it ended up working great. So thanks so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, the password was visible uh, in the connection string. Just it makes it easier to copy that out, and that's probably something that you're not going to do in front of a lot of people. But every mm -hmm. other place, like when you type in the password, um, it's obscured. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you. Um, here is a QR code that will sign you up for a free CockroachDB serverless account. If you don't have an account yet, uh, please sign up using this QR code uh, because it does attribute the signups to uh, this Prisma meetup, and that just allows us to do lots of cool things whenever they see, you know, we're getting signups for going out and doing these things. Um, and then lastly, do you have any questions for Sabin or myself? I know we've tried to uh, keep on top of them here since we've had yeah. moments of lull. I'm not seeing any coming in. <clears throat> yeah. Well, let's see. What is the next slide? There we go. Yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah. Again, thanks so much for for coming on and um, you know running through that for us. That, that was super cool.